Dragons are quintessential fantasy monsters. Dungeons and Dragons have them in their name, and GURPS has two different books devoted to them. GURPS Dragons and GURPS Dungeon Fantasy Monsters for Dragons. The first one takes a detailed look on dragons of various different mythologies and how to use them in your games, and the second one talks about dragons in the context of the dungeon fantasy genre. GURPS Dragons is actually one of the very early 4E books. It's basically a 3rd edition book with conversion notes for 4E in the end. Something like Fiend Folio that came out between D&D 3.0 and 3.5. D&D has many, many varieties of dragons. And honestly, I find the draconic lore of D&D fascinating. And even when you think you know everything, you find something obscure that makes you want to build an entire game around it. Draconomicon for D&D 3.5 is one of my favorite books for that system. Converting D&D Dragons to GURPS, however, was an absolute slog that left me exhausted. This is mostly because each true dragon has 12 age categories that require separate stat blocks. Wormling, Very Young, Young, Juvenile, Young Adult, Adult, Mature Adult, Old, Very Old, Ancient Worm and Great Worm. It would have been easier if they all at least had identical sizes and physical abilities, so I could write up a generic dragon template and then add special features to turn it into a specific dragon template. But no, they are not the same. I know that this is a long introduction part of this video, but you have to bear with me, because I have to explain my thought process. Now that I am reworking the monsters, I ran into my first true dragon, the white dragon. And I really had to think this through thoroughly. Wow, that's a tongue twister. Because the first dragon conversion will define how the rest of them will go, and I have to streamline it, or the dragons will bog me down yet again. So I decided to give GURPS Dungeon Fantasy Monsters 4 Dragons another read. Here's how dragons work in that book. You have four generic dragon stat blocks. Small dragon, medium dragon, large dragon and gargantuan dragon and then a list of different pre-made breath weapons and other traits that you can use to make it less generic, and guidelines on how to make dragons even bigger. And that's pretty much perfect, aside from the fact that these are stat blocks, not templates. For example, a large dragon could be an ancient white dragon, an old blue dragon, an adult red dragon, or a young prismatic dragon. There is no need for age categories anymore. Now I have to take, for example, the medium dragon stat block, reverse engineer it into a template, then adjust it to be closer to a generic D&D dragon, then make the other three size varieties into new stat blocks, I do not need separate templates for them, and only then I will turn this generic dragon into a D&D white dragon. That sounds complicated, but it's actually very simple. This is what the generic D&D medium dragon template looks like. If you compare it to the stat block from Dungeon Fantasy, you will find many differences. In terms of attributes, dragons are strong, incredibly tough and very intelligent. In DF, they are also highly dexterous, but D&D dragons are not, so I removed the dexterity bonus. Also, DF, in my opinion, gives way too many levels of extra attack to dragons so I reduced it to merely extra attack 1. Their rigid scales provide them DR6. D&D dragons also have damage reduction that is circumvented by magic weapons. And in the past I used to give dragons additional DR with Bane magic. But now I decided to remove it. To me it feels like an artificial benchmark for the characters to meet to be able to fight a dragon, not like a weakness. And in GURPS, where the different power sources are actually different, this additional DR makes divine, psionic and other non-magical abilities weaker against the dragons, when in D&D they all work the same. Dragons obviously can fly, but instead of simply giving them winged flight, like DF does, I also added cannot hover. DF dragons are quite slow on the ground, but Draconomicon says that a running dragon can overtake a horse, so I added Enhanced Move 1 Ground. Interestingly enough, DF Dragons do not have much in terms of sensory abilities. They only have Night Vision 9 and Peripheral Vision. 
I decided to reduce night vision to level 7, add infravision to let the dragon see in complete darkness, and also added other senses that are described in more detail on Draconomicon. Vibration sends air to represent blind sight, parabolic hearing one, discriminatory smell and discriminatory taste. I think this is the first time I'm using discriminatory taste on a template. Why did I choose parabolic hearing instead of acute hearing? Draconomicon specifically says that dragons are good at filtering out background noise, and that's the feature of parabolic hearing. The eyes are also heavily protected. In addition to nictitating membrane, the dragons have protected vision. Draconomicon also says that dragons can gauge the distance very accurately, and that their sense of touch becomes worse with age, not better. Thus, I gave them the eye for the distance perk and created a new leveled quirk, Dull Touch, based on the existing Dull Taste quirk, and added 8 levels of it to the template. DF dragons are immune to diseases, and D&D dragons do not have this immunity. Instead, they have immunity to paralysis and sleep. I priced immunity to sleep at 10 points, because doesn't sleep is worth 20 points, and immunity to sleep only makes you immune to being forcefully put to sleep. The dragon still has to sleep naturally. Also, I gave it magic resistance 1 with improved. I decided to go with only one level, because the dragon already has very high will and HT stats. DF ignores the so-called color traits, but I do not, so I included various lifespan and metabolism related traits. First of all, dragons are very long-lived, but not immortal. I went with 5 levels of extended lifespan. Dragons do not require a lot of sustenance, even if some of them are voracious eaters. I gave them reduced consumption 3. Finally, dragons can subsist on any type of matter, not only meat. I gave them universal digestion with matter eater. How often do you see this trait on a template? The next important part of the template is all the natural weapons. Sure, the dragons have talons and fangs, but they often are depicted using wings, tails and horns too. Here I decided to take advice of the natural weapons article from Pyramid 365. New body parts that can be used for striking use the striker advantage. Tails and wings are new, so I made them as crushing strikers. The tail is long, weak, clumsy and cannot parry. The wings are long, weak and limited to front and side hexes. They cannot be used while flying and they can parry. I know that many consider strikers to be invulnerable, but that's just not how it is. Parrying with a wing is possible, but it's also easy to get it injured that way. This generic template does not have horns, but if it did, I would use a natural weapon instead of striker. All dragons in D&D share some common mentality features regardless of their type. A combination of greed and miserliness creates the hoarding behavior that is typical for dragons and selfish and loner make them territorial and make them feel superior to others. Its two quirks, methodical and staid, represent the mentality of always making sure you are prepared and not being concerned with anything that does not affect you specifically. Alright, the genetic template is done. Now let's turn it into a white dragon specifically. First of all, they are adept swimmers, so let's add amphibious. They prefer frigid climates, so let's switch the symmetrical temperature tolerance 6 to temperature tolerance 6 cold. It can move on ice easily and even climb icy surfaces. This means terrain adaptation ice and clinging with specific ice. They have another mode of movement, burrowing. That means adding tunneling with move 1. White dragons also have cold resistance. That's going to be DR20 against cold and also vulnerability to fire. Adult white dragons have some spell-like abilities. I decided to represent them with Air Jet 2 and Fog Cloud 1, taken as alternative abilities. Just some nice situational abilities. In terms of mentality, white dragons suffer from an inferiority complex, due to being the smallest and weakest of chromatic dragons. So they bully everyone around them. I give them the bully disadvantage. They also are absolutely fine with eating sapient beings and that's an odious racial habit. 
Finally, I gave them a quirk to represent the fact that they prefer to eat frozen food. The only thing that is left is a breath weapon. In D&D, white dragons can breathe out a cone of cold. In DF, if you take a look at the generic dragon stat block, you will see that the dragon can either breathe out a cloud or a one-yard white cone that deals thrust damage. This thrust damage thing gave me an excellent idea. What if I built a breath weapon as a natural weapon, instead of an innate attack? After all, even the article itself has this as an example. Here's the result, and I must say that I really like it. First, it actually scales with strength, both in terms of damage and range. So, if the dragon gets buffed with extra strength or weakened, it will also affect the breath weapon, which is nice. And second, most important part for me, is that this ability does not require recalculation. I can use it on a small, medium, large, gargantuan dragon, and it will cost the same. I can even create several pre-made breath weapons to just copy and paste them onto stat blocks. That's gnarly. And here is the final result. While the D&D White Dragon's breath weapon is a cone, this one has something closer to a line. But that's fine, because GURPS Dungeon Fantasy Monsters 4 Dragons introduces new options for cone attacks, such as the all-out attack cone maneuver and new extra effort options. These allow you to increase the width of a cone, to turn your line into a proper cone attack. Anyway, I am very content with the result. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.